Welcome to Public Affairs Roundtable, a discussion of current events in the nation and around the world and how they affect the people of Indiana. Here's your moderator, Larry Long. The format of Public Affairs Roundtable will change somewhat this week as we welcome a guest, Dr. Getz von Boomer, Consul General of the Detroit Consulate of the Federal Republic of Germany, we know better as West Germany, will be questioned here today by our panelists, Dr. Gene Franklin, a professor of political science at Ball State University, whose teaching and research focus on Western Europe and especially West Germans' pivotal role in NATO and the Western Alliance, and John Rouse, also of the political science department, who visited West Germany on a journalist mission in 1984, interviewing German officials in Bonn, West Berlin, and Hamburg. Dr. Von Boomer, welcome to Public Affairs Roundtable. Thank you. What brings you to Muncie, to Indiana, and tell us a little bit about your job as consul. Yes, uh, thank you, Larry. The immediate purpose of my coming to Muncie is that uh, I was invited yesterday to open a German exhibition on those composers uh, Bach, Händel and Schütz. Uh, we celebrate Bach's and Händel's uh, tricentennial, 300 years anniversary of their birthday. Uh, and uh, Henry Schütz is 100 years older. He was born 400 years ago. So Ball State University was interested in having an exhibition on those three composers and my office was happy uh, to make this exhibition available to them. This is in keeping with your role as consul. Uh, what, do you, what do your yes. duties encompass? Uh, the functions of a consul general are, mul are multiple. Uh, Generally speaking, you have the embassy in Washington. The embassy is always where the seat of the government is. And apart from the embassy, we have about 10 uh, consulates general in the United States at all major places. So a consulate general does not uh, deal directly with the US government. Uh, it deals with everybody in the area of jurisdiction uh, where this consulate general is located. My office uh, has to look after affairs in four states of the Midwest, in Michigan, Indiana, um, uh, Kentucky and Ohio. This is an area double the size of West Germany, so it's uh, quite a pleasant job to travel in this vast area. And we basically do everything. Uh, first of all, we have to look after German nationals uh, when they come to uh, ask for advice or help or administrative affairs or issuing of passports. It's done for them. And um, personally, I, my personal role is more to keep contact with all American institutions and walks of life. Uh, so contact with the university and with the media uh, is a main um, main task for me. Well, we're here in contact, uh, part of the media here, gentlemen, uh, Dr. Rouse, uh, issues? I, I think, uh, Dr. Baramir, the issue that perhaps uh, of center of focus to Americans, especially here in Indiana, is the issue of protectionism and trade. We know that President Reagan, of course, is very concerned about this, and so is the Congress. Uh, uh, assuming that World Wars began with problems over economics, as was the case in World War II, as well as World War I. How do you see the, the, the issue of free trade? Well, uh, for the German side, uh, free trade is a vital question. Uh, Germany, much more than the United States, depends uh, on free world markets, uh, because a large proportion of our um, production goes abroad. We really depend on export. Uh, for that reason, uh, uh, free trade uh, is a vital issue for us. Now, uh, the export or the trade balance uh, for Germany was pretty favorable over the last years. Uh, the dollar was high. For that reason, uh, exports from Germany into the dollar area and chiefly the United States uh, was uh, favored, um, was made easier. Uh, so certain German companies may have had a good uh, time because of the high dollar. On the other hand, we uh, view with grave concern that um, on account of the high dollar, the American trade balance has become very unfavorable. 
America suffered a considerable uh, negative trade balance. And uh, this might easily have repercussions uh, in the internal domestic discussion in the United States. States. Uh, several people in here call for protective measures uh, and this indeed uh, would hamper world trade. It would be to the detriment in the long run for all countries concerned because we feel that also for the United States a free flow of goods and services is uh, of vital interest. So we sincerely hope um, that means could be found uh, to uphold uh, the free trade and the free flow of goods and services. Shane? Well, you know, along the same line, might you uh, explain a little bit how uh, Europeans have uh, viewed the, the deficit problems in the United States and to what extent our large deficits and our economic problems spill over and impact upon the European economies? Um, well, um, the, uh, the trade deficit of the United States uh, is, is a regrettable thing. We hope uh, that the dollar will come down a little bit and that uh, export chances for the American uh, economy, for American companies, will improve that uh, America is better in a position to compete. It is not the present uh, unbalanced um, trade balance is not a consequence of <coughs> any deterioration of the quality of American goods or services. Uh, it is just that because of the high dollar, the United States are no longer um, competitive in the sense in which they were before. So it is not a question of quality of American goods, it is uh, just a question of competitiveness in terms of the exchange rate of the dollar. Um, so we, we hope that the, the, the exchange rate will come down, the value of the dollar will come down a little bit, and that would reopen uh, many export markets to the uh, United States. And what's your advice, the West German people's advice to uh, the Reagan administration as to how to attack this problem? Well, uh, it is not that I could give any advice, and I also doubt that um, governments um, are the only force uh, to uh, determine exchange rates. Deter exchange rates are largely determined by the free flow uh, of goods and, and, and the market forces. Um, certainly the central banks play a certain role. Um, it, it should be possible to uh, come down to a, to a lower level of the of the dollar. Um, I cannot give any advice on how um, America, the, the, the Fed here or the government here, uh, could or should uh, react. Uh, but the, we feel that the overall situation in the free uh, flow of goods and services could be ameliorated uh, if the dollar comes a little bit down. If I could perhaps change the topic, the issue that is on the American televisions and also radio, newspapers of course, is the issue of spying. Uh, are to Americans, uh, this is an issue of treason. Do West Germans uh, look at this issue in terms of the uh, persons who are very close to the Chancellor as being spies, persons of uh, treasonous behavior? Uh, what's the view about this? It is, it is treason also in the German uh, sense and in German legal terms. It is a regrettable situation that uh, West Germany is particularly exposed uh, to endeavors from the eastern side, particularly from East Germany, uh, in uh, spying activity. Uh, government is exposed to this and industry is exposed to this. Um, was to understand the basic elements, uh, one has to realize uh, that West Germany is the only country um, which has the same language, the same people, with an East European country. Unfortunately, the borderline between the Eastern and the Western world runs straight through Germany. Uh, the country is divided. Uh, but um, after all, we speak the same language on both sides and uh, politically uh, we feel that we are one nation. Uh, the German gov West German government 
favors uh, all sorts of contacts between the people from East and West Germany. We don't want to allow the political rift going through the country uh, to deteriorate and to become more, more solid and more tight and, and tighter. Um, so we encourage all sorts of contacts. We um, believe in, a, in one German nationality. So people coming from uh, East Germany have basically the same rights as a West German, uh, somebody from East Germany, in our view, in our view, in our legal attitude, is a German national, a German citizen. Um, now, the consequence of this um, political, political and legal system which we uphold is that it is also made easier for spies from East Germany to penetrate uh, into West German bureaucracy and society and industry. This is an awkward uh, position. Uh, we have to live with it uh, somehow. Spying affairs do also occur in many other Western countries. Um, they occur more frequently, perhaps, in West Germany. We are very much concerned about it. We realize this is, that this is also viewed with great con grave concern on the side of our Western allies. Um, we do our best to limit the consequences all the, of all the spying activity from East, from East Germany. Uh, but um, it is hardly possible uh, to get away from it altogether. Gene Franklin, what, yeah, I, what I have a question the response yeah, okay. in terms of the domestic consequences of this. <clears throat> These uh, recent uh, incidents have not been isolated. There have been a great number of moles, I think they're called, uh, that have come out in the, the open. Yes. And at the very top, uh, secretaries to the uh, Free Democratic Party leader, uh, secretaries within the chancellery now. Yes. yes. And the question that comes to mind is, at what point uh, does this make Chancellor Cole's position very vulnerable. If you go back and look in 1974 when Willy Brandt had a majority in the Bundestag and uh, was a popular figure, but yet his credibility was compromised by yes. the uh, discovery of uh, a particular spy very close to him personally. Yes. Now, the difference between the situation for Willy Brandt in 1974 and the present situation is perhaps the following. Um, Willy Brandt had a spy uh, really around him, next to him. This man of the name of Guillaume, uh, French mm -hmm. name, but we have many French names in Germany mm -hmm. on account of Huguenots. Um, this um, man of the name of Guillaume uh, was an aide to Willy Brandt. He was not just a, type, a typist or a low, low type um, office mm -hmm. um, employee. Uh, he was really an aide uh, to Willy Brandt and he worked very close to Willy Brandt. He accompanied Willy Brandt uh, even on his private uh, holiday traveling uh, to Norway, for instance. Um, so Willy Brandt was personally um, endangered uh, by the spy affair of uh, Guillaume, and that then led to his um, demission in 1974. In the present case, it is uh, a secretary, a typist, um, in the chancellor's office, but the chancellor's office is a huge bureaucratic institution. It's, there, there are several hundred people, uh, if not a thousand people, I don't know, uh, work in that office. And she is just a secretary far away from uh, the personality of the chancellor. Um, of course, with the chancellor, there are hundreds of civil servants working, and she is just just one typist relatively far away uh, from the chancellor personally. And she is so much lower in rank, she is just, she's mm -hmm. just a secretary, a typist. Um, uh, so the, um, one should not draw a direct line of comparison uh, between the situation of 1974. Now, along the same line, there was also the uh, revelation that there was a uh, a mole again, an intelligence uh, agent from the agent from the east in the president's office too. Yes, yes. Now, was this again a clerical position? Or was uh, yes, this, this again was a clerical position. Um, a girl that had been working in the president's office um, for twelve years already. Um, 
uh, she again was not a direct aide or a personal uh, secretary to the president, uh, but uh, also in some uh, more distance uh, to the president. The president's office is much smaller than the chancellor's office, um, but still she did not work uh, directly with the, with, the, with the president. If if I could follow up the discussion, is this not is not the issue of spying perhaps one that's just going to show that the complexity of relations between West and East will tend to get more complex in the future, especially with a Soviet uh, leader uh, who is going to be much more sophisticated in dealing with, with the diversities in the West. Uh, is not this issue just one of several that perhaps might come up in the next several years where the West will have to be very sophisticated in dealing with the East in ways that they have not done before? Yes, this is absolutely True. Um, with the complexity uh, of the East-West relations, and particularly of the German relations, um, to which you alluded, um, one cannot exclude uh, further spying activity of the East uh, in future years. Um, but we have lived with this situation for, for, for years. I'm, I remember the days in 1953, now more than 30 years ago, uh, when, when we had a huge spy scandal, when the, the main anti-espionage uh, chief um, defected into the East. Um, it, is, it is an awkward situation. Um, we have lived with this situation for more than 30 years. We, uh, we, we well, I wouldn't say we have come accustomed to it, but uh, we, we are aware of the situation. We do our best uh, to take measures to diminish uh, spying activity. And uh, the Republic is not in danger. Um, the spying activity of the East um, has always been active. Uh, this would not mean that the Federal Republic of Germany or that the West, Western Alliance is in any real danger. Um, our that's, West that's my question. Aren't, aren't we talking about espionage games here? I mean, what is really the upshot? What, what do we have to lose in terms of strategic advantage in, in any terms at all involved in these spy scandals? Aren't we talking about merely uh, high-level espionage games? Um, it, it is a game. Uh, the East employs a great number of spies, but the efficiency of the individual spy uh, is, is limited. An individual spy has only a, a limited insight into affairs, uh, one a little, a little bit more, the other a little bit less. But mind you, the structure of all political and even military affairs of the Western world is uh, that, it, that it is all, or many things, are open to the public. All our Western democratic governments have a pursue a, a policy of making things known to the public. So we open our government activity to a large extent already to the, to the public. Uh, an Eastern intelligence service can uh, always gain information just by reading papers by reading scientific papers, by reading military papers. So if you gather things which are printed in the Western world, an, an intelligent intelligence service of the East can already gather a lot of information. And the, the additional information which may be, uh, which may transpire, which may go on to the West, to the East, um, by such spying affairs is only a limited uh, source uh, which then comes in addition to what is already public by, by uh, publication in public media. I, I, I think one of the concerns that Americans have is the, uh, you know, the uh, agreements or the relationship between West Germany and the United States. Is there any indication that there will be further divisions uh, in the future over this issue? Uh, there's talk about NATO not lasting very much longer. Can you well, educate us on that issue? Well, um, NATO is the basic uh, fundament of all Western alliance. United States be, uh, adhere and depend on NATO. Germany adheres and depends on NATO. Uh, the common defense uh, of the United States and the European, West European countries 
is just a vital factor of, for security of the Western world. Uh, the NATO alliance has proved uh, a successful deterrent to any war-like activities. We have had a relative peaceful time in the Western world for the last 40 years. And uh, uh, this is due to the existence of NATO as a detergent to, to war. Uh, so the the further the, the continuance of NATO is without any question. NATO will continue and it must continue. It is the basic element of defense for the Western world. And the spy affairs would not endanger the existence of NATO. We are certainly aware of a certain hesitation on the part of the United States um, as far as close military cooperation and the uh, passing on of military secrets is concerned. Uh, we are aware of this, we understand uh, the United States in this regard, um, but uh, this, this could not really endanger the continued um, cooperation in all military questions between both our countries. I'm wondering, in, in terms of uh, you know, the domestic politics and the future, uh, all the indications we have here from reading our press and, and commentators and so forth is that there is a growing uh, neutralist sentiment within parts of the Social Democratic Party, SPD. In fact, a position paper uh, of a few weeks ago in which the withdrawal of American troops was envisaged you know, in a long-term sense, but still, uh, are these neutralist sentiments growing, not maybe in the current leaders, but what you might say, the next generation of leaders? Uh, there is some, some element of neutralism uh, in certain political uh, quarters in Germany. We had the peace movement, which was not one movement. Uh, the peace movement consisted of quite a number of various groups, uh, usually small groups. Um, not necessarily Eastern dominated or influenced groups, uh, but uh, in the outcome their activity may have played into the hands of Eastern politics, that's quite clear. Uh, the, the, um, the, the culmination uh, of all this peace movement activity was uh, about three years ago when there was the political debate uh, on the double-track uh, NATO decision on, on rearmament. And uh, the, the outcome of all this, dis this discussion was that on the parliamentary level uh, the double-track NATO decision was confirmed and the deployment of American troop, of American uh, weapons, missiles and, and um, this, this um, middle-range uh, missiles were confirmed by Parliament. So when you take it uh, to the really responsible level of political decision-making, making, and that's Parliament, then um, the clear adherence uh, to the Western alliance uh, and to the deployment of American troops, uh, of American weapons better, and the stationing of American troops is clearly uh, upheld um, in politi by political parties. Now, with the Social Democratic Party, it is clear that there are certain elements within the Social Democratic Party which uh, which are less uh, in favor of Western defense and have less understanding for stationing of American troops. But you must also consider that the Social Democratic Party is in opposition. And when a party is in opposition, uh, politicians are less responsible. Um, they are more individualistic uh, in their public statements. Um, an opposition party can play on all sorts of um, diverging political thinking. Um, if, and there's no indication for that, if the Social Democratic Party would regain power uh, in government uh, in West Germany, um, then the leading politicians and the members of parliament of the Social Democratic Party, I'm pretty sure, um, would regain the same uh, degree of responsibility uh, which they have shown uh, during the time in which they were in, in, in government. Is the issue of 
nuclear disarmament, which we look at rather as infancy in the United States, is it the next generation issue that might cause some uh, ill feelings between, if not governments, uh, between the people of Germany and the government of the United States? Uh, we have about a minute here. Um, well, the, 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 the people uh, have certainly uh, an inclination to preserve peace. This was the the basis of the, all this peace movement. There's a natural inclination uh, that war should be prevented uh, because any war between East and West would most probably be on German soil or at least Germany would be inflicted um, by such a war. So the, the natural desire is uh, to preserve peace. Now some, some people may feel that uh, armament could endanger peace. This is just another another approach, another uh, philosophical uh, feeling. Some people may feel that armament uh, um, endangers safety and security in that it could induce the Soviet side, the Eastern Bloc, uh, to uh, wage war um, in order to get rid of any menace from the West, menace as they see it. Um, but the majority of people, of people, and certainly the majority of politically responsible people, members of parliament and government, f uh, are convinced that the, uh, that the preparation for defense is a necessary means and the only means of keeping the balance of power and of preserving peace in that way. That Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Von Boomer, for being with us today. Thank you, Gene Franklin and John Rouse, our panelists. Uh, I'm Larry Law. Thank you for being with us. Yeah. Thank you very much. If you have comments regarding this program, please address them to John Rouse, Box 149, Muncie, Indiana, 47306. The producer for Public Affairs Roundtable is John Rouse. Associate producer is Mike Seaborn. Public Affairs Roundtable is a production of the Department of Political Science and public radio and television stations on the campus of Ball State University in Muncie, Indiana.